Friday Insights on a holiday weekend. Hopefully you have some good plans for Labor Day weekend here. Look, a little bit of bookkeeping before we dive in. About 75% of you watch these videos, like these videos, but it, you're watching on YouTube and have not subscribed. So please, if you have a YouTube account, do subscribe to our channel, One Degree Outside. We would really appreciate it. Help things out for us. Meanwhile, um, look, I've got the Coastal Marine forecast coming up in a separate video. So if you're looking for the boating forecast, I'll take care of you. But let's dive into what's going on in the 14-day dew point forecast here. Okay, there's some big changes that are coming up. First of all, we get more humidity that comes in here for the upcoming weekend. Then after Sunday, when it peaks, it comes down significantly. There's a big shot of fall air coming in for the beginning and middle of next week. It ends up spelling some really nice weather. And then we talk about a build in humidity again for next weekend, which again is replaced by fall air. Tis the season for kind of well-pronounced changes in air, particularly when it comes to cold fronts. And there's one of those across the nation's midsection. This is being recorded on Friday. Some of you watch it on the weekends on Saturday and Sunday. So I'm not going to belabor any one point. I'm going to make sure we cover everything for you and also give you the overall weather story about the full holiday weekend in early next week. And the weather story really, uh, you get a, a hint for it on the water vapor imagery. This is where we're tracing water vapor or gas in the atmosphere so you can see where the air is moving. Mostly we've got northern stream disturbances coming in. Once in a while you do get a plume of white and green, which is moisture that pools out ahead of those disturbances. That raises the chance for showers and storms, but it's pretty quickly swept away. I was talking yesterday about the atmospheric energy, and one of the things that I've really kind of been using that as a clue for, Danielle and I, we realized that when you look at some of the computer guidance, precipitation, even relative humidity, um, a lot of those are derived fields. But if we can see what's going on in terms of the actual energy in the atmosphere, it sometimes gives you some clues before the trends are picked up on, for example, in precipitation. So notice on Saturday, the energy is mostly in northern New England or northwest of New England. Greatest chance of thunderstorms will be in New York and Pennsylvania, but in northern the New England, the chance of showers and storms grows as the day goes on. There is an isolated chance in southern New England in the morning. That's separate, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute. By Sunday afternoon, where's the energy now? Well, in the yellow and oranges, that's already coming across the mass turnpike, which is why we really believe that Sunday morning, there's going to be showers for a number of us. But Sunday afternoon, drying probably is taking place from northern Massachusetts points north. And then as we get deeper into Sunday evening and night, the air changes so that even if energy comes through after that in the early part of next week, it's so dry. It doesn't really make much of a difference. So Storm Prediction Center has highlighted New York and Pennsylvania for an increased risk of severe thunderstorms, but that does bleed into western New England on Saturday. And then on Sunday, there's actually an increased chance for a lot of us. But just remember, we really think here at One Degree Outside, a lot of that drier air is going to start coming in at least to the northern half of New England, if not a little bit more than that. The reason there's an isolated shower Saturday morning is because we've got an influx of warmth and humidity. That's going to mean a lot of clouds, breaks of sun, um, but at the same time, as the humidity rises, there is a chance of an isolated shower in the first part of the day in southern New England. Otherwise, it's mostly afternoon and evening where the chance builds across northern and western New England. This is the map at 1230. Here are the storms taking off in New York and Pennsylvania. There's most of the focus by Saturday evening. But certainly, we've got showers and thunder coming into northern and western New England by that point as well. Overnight, Saturday night, it looks like some of these are going to be drifting on through. And they are still going to have downpours and thunder embedded with them. So that's why we say by Sunday morning, the cold front hasn't come through yet. The air hasn't changed yet. It's very humid. It's the peak of humidity on Sunday. There will be showers. Some embedded downpours and thunderstorms will be around. But as we go to the afternoon, a lot of the drier air we really do believe comes through northern and central New England, probably, as I mentioned, down to about northern Mass, limiting your chance of later day showers and thunder to probably near and south of the Mass Turnpike. And then the brand new air is in by Labor Day. It's going to be really, I guess we could say comfortable air, but it's it's chilly. If you've got pool time or lake time, you want to get in this holiday weekend, do not save it for Monday. <laughs> you don't want to wait till then. It'll be too cool for most of us. All right. Rain forecast over the weekend when you put it all together. Again, most of this is falling either Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday, depending on where you are. It's not epic amounts. There is an elevated chance of flash flooding that comes out of the government for this weekend in New England. That's because if you got any type of isolated downpours that had higher amounts, you may be able to tip the scale to flash flooding. That would not be the case for most of us, though. Uh, speaking of things changing down in the tropics, remember I was telling you over the Insights video the last few days, waiting for that chance of development to go up from the hurricane center up to 40% now over the next seven days. The good trend on this has been the wave is staying pretty far south. So if it maintains this, it's going to come in probably through the Windward Islands and then well south of Puerto Rico and Haiti and the Dominican. And so by doing that, that actually, first of all, delays the time that we would need to watch it in the first place. And second of all, gives a better chance that any type of curl 
Pearl North might happen more like toward the Gulf of Mexico. So I still think it definitely bears watching uh, for everybody in the United States. But having said that, at least you've got kind of a stay here where it's going to be a little bit slower to evolve uh, just because of the fact it's coming in a little farther south. All right, so if we go day by day, Saturday, we're talking about temperatures up into the 70s, 75 to 80 in southern New England. That morning shower chance south, the afternoon and evening thunder that comes in to northern and western New England. Saturday night, we all deal with the downpours. It's muggy, it's mild. That leaves us with our most humid day on Sunday. Temperatures come to 80. Again, after the morning showers sink southward, we start drying things out in northern and central New England, all the way down to northern Mass. And eventually, that trend comes farther south through southern New England. And by Sunday night, brand new air is coming in. And this is what I mean about Monday, the fact that I wouldn't want to save my pool day or my lake day, especially in northern Vermont. Uh, when you get around First Connecticut Lake in Coas County in northern New Hampshire, it's going to be 62 for high on Labor Day. So most of the day spent in the 50s. That's chilly, and the breeze is blowing, for that matter, as well, out of the northwest at about 10 miles an hour. Monday night, we'll probably go to the 30s in some of the sheltered valleys in northern New England. Widespread 40s with that fall air. Tuesday, it's beautiful. Like I said, you start this really great stretch. It's just going to be cool fall air. Look, over the course of the weekend, again, some of you watch this all different times. One of the best ways to stay on top of uh, the forecast is with our app. That's why we designed it the way we did, especially when it comes to the timing of showers precisely as we get through Saturday and Sunday. So download the app if you haven't already. Noise is one degree outside, whether you can get on the App Store and Google Play. Again, Coastal Marine Forecast is going to be posted in just a little bit, but you can always find all of our updates at onedegreeoutside.com. Have a great Labor Day weekend.